What's up guys, Kudokun here. This is going to be the second part of my After Hours video game update extravaganza. Um, if you are just interested in the Nintendo games, and that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing here. All of my Switch games with a couple of 3DS collectibles thrown in a little bit here. Um, but this is technically going to be the second part of this little series that I'm doing because I did all of my PS5 and PS4 games first. So if you're interested in that, Feel free to go back and watch it. If not, I completely understand. Um, honestly, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. This series is a little bit more for me than it is you guys. Um, I love doing the big videos like the Metamorphosis videos and stuff, but those also require a lot of time and editing. And sometimes I just kind of want to sit down, relax with a cup of coffee and just talk. So that is basically what I'm doing here. This is more for me than it is for you guys. So if you're not into that kind of thing, I completely understand. But just in case you are here from the other video, I want to get straight into it here. You've already given me about an hour and a half of your life, so I don't want to take too much of your time more. Um, going to be looking at all of my regular games here first. Now, do keep in mind that uh, my original game collection was uh, stolen. So some of these I do have the case for, but I no longer have the game for, and some of these um, I'm going to have multiple copies of, so if you see multiple copies, chances are um, it was uh, one of the games that was stolen, and I still have the case for it, but I ended up rebuying it because I really liked it. So, first things first, Lost Sphere. Um, funnily enough, I told that story because this is one of the games that I haven't replaced that I am looking to replace. It's a very, very classic uh, Super Nintendo-style RPG. Um, I really dig it, actually. It's a little bit like uh, the East series. But, um, yeah, when I bought this, I actually bought it originally because it was sort of uh, pitched to me as, like, a really rare collectible game. And it's kind of not, like, Lost Sphere is not much of a collectible game, but, I mean, it's still kind of an okay game to have in my collection, so I have it. Marvel Super Heroes 2. Um, I ended up getting this as a part of like a, um, a Craigslist deal or something where basically um, I talked to somebody on Craigslist and they ended up selling me like this and like a bunch of other games for a really, really cheap price. It's the only reason I have it. I never even put it in my system. Kabuto Burst Battle. Um, nice game. Kind of boring, actually. <laughs> like, it's fine. I don't really... I wouldn't say that I hate it or anything. Normally, I kind of like Toho games, because um, I really like the character designs, and I think it's a really neat uh, series, but this one didn't really do it for me. I'm sure there are some other people who feel the same. Golden Volt Striker Pack. If I am ever in the mood to go back and play a retro Mega Man-style game, I usually pick Gun Volt. I think Gun Volt is uh, highly underrated, actually. Um, if you're a fan of old-style Mega Man games and you haven't given Gun Volt a chance... Highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's a really, really, really good series if you want to scratch that particular itch without going back and replaying a Mega Man game again. Rayman Legends. Um, I was one of the absolute biggest critics of this game when it came out. Um, I actively hated this game, and I'll admit that was completely unfair. Because uh, I hated it mainly because I really liked Rayman 2 and uh, Rayman 3, when they were sort of going in like a darker art style, and they were taking the story a little bit more seriously. Um, those games are a huge part of my childhood, and I love them to death, and I'll still go back and play them occasionally now. And when I saw what they were doing here, I kind of just boycotted it <laughs> for myself, because I was like, oh, I hate that they're not making the game exactly the way I want it to be. And then I played it a few years later, and I was completely wrong. This game's a masterpiece. Highly recommend it if you're into platformer games. Pokken Tournament, completely fine game. I play it more for the uh, novelty of it than anything else. Now, of course, uh, this is also going to be a game that um, I haven't had a chance to rebuy yet, but I kind of dig it. I wouldn't say it's necessarily worth buying nowadays, especially since I have a feeling that another Pokken game is going to be coming not uh, too far in the future, so maybe just wait for that. But if you ever see it somewhere for like 20, 30 bucks, maybe pick it up. Fate Extella, actually, uh, as far as Mushu games go, I really like uh, the Fate Extella games. Now, of course, people are going to say that it has something to do with the fan service, and you're kind of right. Yeah, that too. But um, I actually really dig the atmosphere of these games. Um, I think the characters are really fun to hang out with, and. Um, 
I actually think the whole like uh, hopping from area to area mechanic is really, really well done. So, I mean, if you like Mushu and you like a little bit of fan service, it's a pretty good game. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. What can I possibly say about this game? Um, it is glorious. I thought this game was super fun. The only criticism that I could say that I really have about it is um, I hate the fact that you can't customize your teams that well. Uh, if you've never played this game before, you have to have Mario in your team at all times. That's There's no exception, and you only get three character slots. And you also have to have one of the Rabbids characters. So you have to have Mario, you have to have a Rabbid, and then uh, the third um, slot is the only one that you really get any freedom with. So looking forward to the next one in the series. Hopefully they'll switch that around. Um, I really, really hope that they fix that. Because once they fix that, the formula is pretty much perfect. Kirby Star Allies, it's fine. Um, I love Kirby aesthetically, and I love Kirby in theory. But I don't have that much fun with the games anymore. They're just fine. Um, I mean, I'll stand Kirby's Air Ride for the rest of my life. But when it comes to the actual Kirby games like this, it's not just just doesn't do it for me. I am looking forward to the 3D Kirby game coming out pretty soon, though. Good old uh, Super Bomberman R. Um, I, growing up, was a pretty big fan of Bomberman. My friends and I would actually sit around and play. Uh, there was a PS1 demo disc that had a Bomberman game on it. And my friends and I would just sit around and play that. I also used to uh, play a lot of, um, what is it called? Wario vs. Bomberman, like Bomb Battle or something, on the Game Boy. Like the original Game Boy. So I like to keep Bomberman games as part of my collection. Um, this isn't like the best Bomberman game ever, and uh, this is another game that I need to get replaced because I don't have the actual game anymore, but um, now that the creator of Bomberman has died, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of an, it's kind of an unfortunate send-off, but what are you gonna do? Snipper Clips, um, you need somebody else to play this game with you, so I really haven't done too much with it. Um, unfortunately, my girlfriend is not very big into playing games with me. Uh, she's just not a gamer. She just doesn't really like uh, playing video games. So, unfortunately, um, I haven't gotten to do a whole lot with this game, but I do think it's super fun for what it is. Splatoon 2. Um, it is completely fine. The DLC for this game is amazing, but I got bored of the main game so quick that uh, I, I really don't have anything to say about it. It's Splatoon 1, slightly better. Cave Story, a uh, very, very good game. Um, I got this because it was sort of talked up by uh, some internet reviewers, and I, I thought it sounded kind of cool, so I ended up picking it up, and it was kind of cool. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite games on the Switch or anything, but it's good. It's good enough. Hyrule Warriors, I've bought this game every single time it's come out. I bought it on the Wii U, um, loved it, bought it on the 3DS, Loved it even more. And now we have the Switch version, and it's the best one. Um, love this game. Love it, love it, love it. Probably, and I, I say this uh, with absolutely no, uh, <laughs> um, no irony here, this is probably my favorite Mushu game ever made. It's better than every Dynasty Warriors. It's better than every Samurai Warriors. It's better than every other Warrior-style game, including Age of Calamity, but we'll get to that. Fire Emblem Warriors, um, pretty much the exact opposite. This game was fun, and it had some really creative ideas, but it's way too easy to break this game, um, and it's just not that fun once you figured out the little uh, tricks and stuff that actually make the game tick. Um, so, yeah, really good ideas. If they do a second one, I'll be really interested in seeing what they do with it, but the game just gets really, really easy really, really quickly. Attack on Titan 2. Um, this is probably one of the best anime games ever made. If you've never had a chance to try out an Attack on Titan game, highly recommend it. Um, I know that uh, you might see the two here and think, oh, well, I'm never going to pick that up. You have to play the first one first. Don't do it. Um, this is basically a retelling of the entire show from the first episode to the last, and you don't need to play the first one in order to play this one. 
And believe me, when I say that, that means something. Because I'm somebody who also likes to wait and play the first game in a series first. But there is no reason to do it here because this is its own retelling of the entire show. Um, the combat in this game is god tier. Um, the storyline is pretty good because obviously Attack on Titan is good. So obviously the storyline for an Attack on Titan video game is going to be good. Um, one of the best anime games ever made. Pick it up. It'll do too. This is basically a Zelda clone. Um, I like it. It's not necessarily a memorable experience. I probably wouldn't rank it higher than maybe like a 5 or a 6. But um, honestly, if you can find it pretty cheap, like 15 20 ish dollars, and you like the uh, sort of old-timey Zelda type games, this is really good. If I remember correctly, uh. And the collectibles just jump right out at you. Um, it's got some pretty fun little collectibles here. Like, I, I've always really liked uh, this little, like, card here. I think it's really it's really charming. I don't know. I really like uh, Zelda-style games, and I find it'll do very, very charming. So, highly recommend it. Soldom is another game that was sold to me based on rarity. Um, if you don't know, I went through a phase when I was living in Fullerton where I was basically trying to just collect, like, every single Switch game ever made. So I would, every, like, hour or so, look online to see if I could find games that I didn't have. And Soldam, I looked online, and um, at the time, I heard that there was a limited, um, limited amount of copies for this game made. I don't think that's true anymore. I think I've done some research on it in the past, and turns out that that was just completely wrong. There are plenty of copies of this out there, but... I mean, I have it. It's a game that I didn't have that I now have, so it's fine. Um, arms? Ugh. I mean, what can you, what can you say about Arms? Um, I was very excited for this game before it came out. Um, I still remember uh, good old Etika, you know, rest in peace Etika. Um, he was really excited for this game, and he got me hyped for this game. And then it came out, and it died on Impact. I still love the ideas behind this game. I think it's a really fun game to play for a few minutes. But the problem with it is it just gets uh, too repetitive too quickly. And honestly, online battles are nowhere near as fun as it was advertised. So uh, if they clean up the online, they um, give you some more gameplay modes. I think an ARMS 2 could be really, really good. But we'll just have to see. Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Listen to me, okay? Listen to me right now. If you bought Pokemon Sword and Shield or Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and this game is not a part of your collection, you need to look in the mirror and rethink your entire life. This is half the price of a Pokemon game. It's got two of the best monster collecting RPGs on it, and it's honestly just Pokemon, but everything is better. Now that Legends Arceus is out, maybe it's a little bit different, because Legends Arceus is um, absolutely amazing. If you haven't seen my review, I recommend going and watching it, but um, this is really good. Um, people complain all the time about how stale and stagnant Pokemon feels, and you got this game sitting over here waiting, waiting for you to buy it. I know your local Walmart has it. I know your local GameStop has it. It's like $20, $25. Do not buy another mainline Pokemon game until you at least try out Digimon Cyber Sleuth. You're not going to regret it. I promise. It's really, really, really good. All right. Um, Super Mario Odyssey, um, classic gem. What what else can you possibly say about this, really? I mean, it's, it is Super Mario Odyssey. That should be pretty much the only thing I have to say to you. Uh, Wild Guns Reloaded. I got this because um, it looked really rare. Like, I pretty much, like, I had never seen it before. And then I ended up running into it. It's another Natsume game. Natsume games have a very inflated rarity, I think. Because every time I hear about... Um, one of these games that are supposedly really rare, it ends up being a Natsume game. Um, so that's the only reason I picked it up. I never actually got around to playing it, and yes, this is another game that I need to replace, but because it is uh, not that rare of a game, I think that'll be completely fine. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. So, 
I waited years for there to be a Fire Emblem that was as good as Fire Emblem Awakening. And, you know, um, after years, you know, I finally am still waiting because this game's not that good. <laughs> don't, don't you tell me. Don't you tell me that Fire Emblem Three Houses is anywhere near as good as the 3DS games. All right, I refuse. I refuse. To, I refuse to believe it. Okay, Fire Emblem Houses is fine. Okay, Three Houses is completely okay. But that is all that it will ever be to me. It's just okay. It's got the worst characters in the franchise. Don't tell me. Don't tell me in the comments that you think this game has good characters. Characters suck. They're either uh, total archetypes or they're just totally bland. Um, the gameplay without the weapon triangle is just completely boring. You can pretty much pick up any weapon in the game and completely uh, cut through it. And then the game sort of forces you into a weapon archetype anyway because uh, I just, I can't keep talking about this game. Okay, look, I know I'm making some people very, very salty right now. This is just an okay game. That's all it is. It's not horrible. It's not a masterpiece. It's just a very okay game. And I'm still waiting for a Fire Emblem game to really capture me like Awakening. Want to switch. Gross. Put it over here. Um, Darkest Dungeon. Very, very good. Um, I actually own like three copies of this. I own this one here. And then I own one on the PC and the PS4, I believe. Um, this is always a joy to go through, um, and really you don't have to play it for that long for it to really pick up in difficulty, so, um, I don't, there's really not much else I can say about it, it's really, really fun, I'm sure most of you have heard of this game by now, I like to pick it up and play it every once in a while, Skyrim on the Switch, um, also gross, I'm gonna put that over here, I only got it because at the time it was, um, uh, really, really cheap, somebody sold it to me for like $20, so obviously I said yes, has been Heroes. When I first got the Switch, okay, we're going to go back in time here to the first year that the Switch was released. This was going to be the first game that I picked up. And then I picked it up. And it's honestly not very good. <laughs> I'm actually very upset at myself for picking this up over some other games. Luckily, it was a little bit cheaper than other games at the time, so I didn't lose that much money. Um, this is one of the games that was uh, stolen and I haven't replaced yet. And honestly, I don't know if I'll ever replace it because it's just not really worth replacing in my personal opinion. What a letdown. Probably one of the biggest letdowns on the Switch for me so far. Fallen Legion. Um, it's a pretty basic RPG. Um, it's okay. It's okay, though. It's um, Honestly, I don't really mind it that much. Um, I definitely wouldn't say that it's great. Um, there are definitely some RPGs for the Switch that I would recommend over this game. Um, but it's fine. Now, if you're just looking for an okay RPG and you find that sitting around somewhere for like 15 bucks, I'd say go for it. Alright. So, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Got a review for that on my channel too. Uh, what, can, what else can I say, uh, except it's amazing. Uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. I will die on the hill that this is one of the best anime fighters that we've gotten um, in recent years. Um, they threw in Ruby characters, which is the reason that I ended up buying it, actually, was just to see what they did with the Ruby characters. And uh, surprise, surprise, they were fantastic. I really wish this game had had a chance to reach its full potential, but uh, they made a lot of promises for this game. They had a lot of plans for this game, and the roadmap just... Uh, got lost somewhere. Um, the game wasn't hitting the sales they needed it to, and they ended up canceling a lot of their plans for this game, but I think with a little bit more time, this could have been uh, one of the absolute classics when it comes to anime fighters. I still go back and play it every once in a while, but um, that's about it. Knights of Azure 2, another game that I'm looking to replace. I actually really like the Knights of Azure series. Um, they're basically Mushu games, and yeah, they've got a little bit of fan service. They're kind of like Fate Extella, just not as good. Um, and they're completely fine, honestly. You know, if you just want to run around, beat some people up, and uh, see some anime waifus, it's a pretty good game. Payday 2, I... No, don't even worry about that. Okay, I got it really cheap. That's all we're going to say about that. 
This guy of five complete. I ended up picking this up pretty much on release day. Um, and I like it actually. I, I think this might be one of my favorite Disgaea games. Um, I, let's see. I really like the first, <laughs> excuse me. I really like the first Disgaea. The first Disgaea is probably my favorite. Um, and then I think four, then five, then two, then three, then six. Six is terrible. So here, oh no, the gods are punishing me for saying that, trying to knock down my tower of games that I've built over here. Alrighty then. So, um, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, this game sucks. It's terrible. Um, never ever pick this up. It's just absolute garbage. Just kidding. It is the best Pokemon game that we've gotten in the last, like, decade. Uh, it is so good. Um, I will say that I am right now I'm playing this through again in Japanese to so practice my Japanese a little bit um and it is just as good this time I'm actually going to go through and do all the side quests and stuff when I was uh, playing this game for the review I had to get through the main story as quickly as possible so I ended up skipping a lot of the side content not really doing everything that I wanted to do and now that I can play it at my own leisure I am looking forward to seeing everything this game has to offer Bravely, Bravely Default 2. Um, I didn't get very far in this game, and I'll tell you why. Um, this is the most bored I've been with any of the Bravely Default games so far. The first one, hooked. Could not put that game down. Absolutely amazing. Up until a certain point. Uh, no spoilers, but if you know, you know. And then uh, Bravely Second comes out, and I don't know why people were so harsh on that game. I actually love that game to death. I thought it was uh, really, really, really fun. Um, some people didn't like it, and, you know, everybody has their own opinion, I suppose. And then Bravely Default 2, in my personal opinion, is the weakest in the series. Again, I know some people would say that Bravely Second is the weakest in the series. Completely disagree. Um, the characters are really boring. It could just be that I miss Ring a Bell. I completely acknowledge that uh, I want Ring a Bell uh, back and I want Idea back. But I mean, the characters are an integral part of the game. If you don't like the characters for the game, then I mean, I think that's a completely fair criticism to have. Rabbids talked about it. It's one of the games that I replaced because I loved it so much. Um, Axiom Verge. This is like an old Samus. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I sound like such a fake gamer right now. This is like an old Metroid-style game, and it's completely fine. I'm not the biggest fan of Metroid-style games. I got this because I think I found the uh, like a collector's edition or something really cheap, and that's why I picked this up. Sonic Forces. I think I did a review for this on my channel, too. It's actually been so long that I don't even remember if I did. Um, this is going to sound really stupid, but the only reason I picked this up is because uh, I pre-ordered it and got the special uh, skins that you could put on your Joy-Cons. And then I don't think I ever even used them. Are they still in here? One sec. We gotta see. They're still in here. I still have them. So I could actually put these on a set of Joy-Cons if I really wanted to. Now, obviously, I'm not going to because my Joy-Cons are uh, beautiful little babies right now. But, ha! Huh. Neato. All right. Well, gonna have to remember that these are in here. Uh, game itself is terrible. But, I mean, at least I got a cool little collectible out of it. Ring Fit Adventure, I had the exact same experience with this that I'm sure like 95% of other people out there had. I played it for like a week. I was like, wow, this is a really fun way to work out. Uh, and then I put it down and never touched it again. <laughs> Turns out the game itself is fun, but working out sucks. So yeah, I will probably at some point tell myself that I need to lose some weight and then go back and try and play it again. Play it for a week, get bored and put it back down. Uh, Shantae, Half Genie Hero, um, I mean, I, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing this by now, but I'm kind of a fan of this series. Um, it's one of those trap series where it's like, oh, okay, well, the main characters just dress really provocatively, so, you know, it's going to attract perverts, and then that's going to be it. And that's what I kind of thought, too, when I first got into it. I was like, oh, well, she's, uh, really cute, so I'm going to get into the series and see what that's all about. But the gameplay is actually really fun. Um, it's not the deepest platformer that I've ever played, but honestly, kind of enjoy it. Um, Kingdom Hearts, uh, Melody of Memory. Um, 
what do we say here? Um, I'm really not a huge fan of rhythm games. Like, if you're going to be a rhythm game, I really need, like, a, some fairly decent hook to keep me invested in the game. And I know that the Kingdom Hearts music is amazing. Don't get me wrong, okay? I agree with you. Kingdom Hearts music, 10 out of 10. But... I really haven't invested much time into this. It's probably the only Kingdom Hearts game ever made that I haven't beaten yet. So at some point I'll go back and I'll uh, actually invest some time to beating it. But right now Arceus is uh, taking up all of my time. Blue Fire. Um, this is one of the games that I saw um, floating around during the Black Friday hunting. And I was really interested in it just because it looks really cool it looks a little bit like um if you look at the back here it looks a little bit like hollow knight but uh of course the gameplay looks a little bit different but the character design itself looks a little bit hollow knighty so i ended up picking it up i haven't actually played it yet but if i do get around to playing it then i will let you guys know how it is roots film now i'm a big fan of story-based games um I picked this up because it sounded really interesting. It's basically, I um, can't even really remember, but it's uh, basically about this really like creepy film guy who's like uh, trying to make a film or something. And it's, I haven't really gotten into this. I think I watched like the opening cutscene and then uh, ended up putting the game down and picking up something else. So can't really say much about it, but um, it looks really cool. I'm excited to get into that at some point. Okay, well, uh, that happens. Anyways, uh, Zenjin. I picked this up because uh, when I'm doing my Black Friday shopping, um, I keep an eye out for games that I don't see at very many stores. Like, when I'm Black Friday shopping, I'll go to, like, uh, 15 different GameStops, and if I see a game that only really appears at like one or two of the game stops, I'll normally just pick it up just because it's something that I don't see that often. So I want to make sure I get a copy of it. So that's why I got this. I haven't actually popped it into play it yet. I don't even really know what kind of game it is, but it's got a fun name. It's got nice artwork and uh, I really didn't see it at more than like two places. So I wanted to pick it up. Shin Megami Tensei 3. Uh, game is completely fine. I've got some feelings about the Shin Megami Tensei series that I'll get into a little bit more when we get to 5. Uh, just know that I think this game is completely alright. It's not as good as 4 in my personal opinion. Zoids. Good old, good old shovelware. Um, Max. I mean, I really don't know what else to say at this point. I love Max. I love Max anime. I love Max games. I love Max kits. And Zoids, when I was growing up, was one of my fondest memories of watching a mecha anime. If you've never seen it before, uh, it's basically like this um, very competitive, sort of like tournament style uh, mecha anime where everybody builds their own mechs and then they come in and they do battle. And the main character of Zoids was Liger Zero and he was like the most cheating mech in the entire world because he would leave the battlefield and then re-equip new armor, and then come back into fight. I have no idea why they just made that completely okay for him and not for anybody else, but that was one of the quirks of his uh, mech, was that he could try, like sort of change it up on the fly to fit his enemy's um, weaknesses. Uh, here's an East game. This is East 9. Haven't actually played it yet, but I do remember loving the East games on my PSP, so I went ahead and picked this up. Astral Chain. Um, this game is absolutely amazing. It's made by the same people who made Bayonetta. And I don't know why I have to explain this to people. This should be like a mainstay on the Switch. Like if you own a Switch and you already have Mario and Zelda, this should be the next game that you've already picked up. But for some reason, uh, when I talk about this game, it seems like nobody really even remembers that it existed, I have no idea how that happens. This game is on par with some of the best games on the Switch. Um, in fact, if you like anime-style games, this might be the best one on the entire Switch. So, I really don't know why I have to explain this to you people. It's just the best anime game on the Switch. I, if you're a fan of anime-style games, then I don't know why people don't talk about that game anymore. It, it completely baffles me. Uh, this is Bladed Fury. 
Um, this is another game that I found for a really, really cheap price. This was, I think, $15. So that's the only reason I picked it up. Um, I haven't actually played it yet. I don't know anything about it. But it was $15. It looked like it might be a pretty good uh, thing to add to the collection. So I added it to the collection. Yeah. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Um, I really liked Xenoblade Chronicles, the first one. So, I mean, I have it. Um, I've already played the crap out of it on the 3DS, so I haven't really, like, gone through and beaten it on the Switch yet, because I've already beaten it on the 3DS, but, I mean, what can I say? It's great. It gave us Shulk, who is one of my favorite characters in Smash Brothers history, so, uh, thank you for that. Sorry, I had to make sure that we were still recording. That would be very embarrassing if it turned out I had to redo the entire video because I wasn't actually recording. Breath of the Wild, talked about it, amazing. Silver Case, I picked this up because I found the Collector's Edition while I was uh, Black Friday shopping. Um, looks really good, looks pretty creepy, but haven't actually popped it in to play it yet, so can't really talk too much about it. Sonic Colors, I'm not as big a fan of Sonic Colors as other people are. Some people will say that Sonic Colors was kind of like the Sonic Renaissance, where uh, they really found a way to perfect the formula. Um, I'm just not a fan of the Wisp mechanic. I know some people really like the Wisps, and they think they add a lot to the game. But, I mean, me personally, I'm just not that big a fan. I, I really don't know what to say other than that. It's fine. It's pretty good, but I'll take Generations over that game any day. Um, I ended up getting the Nice collection with Soul Nomad and Phantom Brave, partly because I'm a huge Nice fan. I'm not as fan, I'm sorry, I'm not as big a fan of Nice as I am like Square Onyx, but I still really, really like their games. Um, I don't actually know anything about Soul Nomad. Um, I am looking forward to testing it out at some point. Again, Arceus is sort of taking up all of my time right now. And Phantom Brave. I have played through Phantom Brave like four times, and I still to this day love it and can go through it again. Um, Phantom Brave is one of the few games that I am more than willing to go through multiple times just because of how good it is. Some of the best characters in any tactical RPG that I've ever seen. Um, and the gimmick of this game is really cool. So basically you play as this girl here, Marone, and... Um, She's like a spirit medium, and everybody hates her because of it. Like, everybody thinks that she's a demon because she can summon, like, dead spirits. And, you know, fair enough, but um, she has to sort of grow up and deal with that fact. And she finally goes through and makes some friends, and it's very emotional. And I'm not crying right now, you're crying. Um, but it's a really, really cool story. And then, of course, the gimmick, because she can summon dead spirits, is when you're on the battlefield, you can um, actually turn items into um, warriors. So basically you find an item and you use it as a sort of medium to summon a spirit into battle and that's how you actually get more allies and then there are these different things that you can do. It's a very very um, interesting and wacky game because you can use pretty much anything as a weapon. You can fight using pumpkins, you can fight using pots, pretty much anything you can pick up. Not only can you use it as a weapon but it has its own move set and special moves. So um, cannot get enough of this game. Haven't tried this game out, but it's probably pretty good. Occupus Strip. Um, I mean, it's pretty good. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't like this game as much now that I've played it. Um, like, I played it, and when I first went through it on the Vita, I actually had a lot of fun with it. But nowadays, uh, I tried to pick it up again once I got it on the Switch. And I got it on the Switch because I got the Collector's Edition. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of it when I went through it a second time. I don't know if it's one of those games that you can really only experience once. I don't know if I've just sort of outgrown it. I just, when I played it again, I just didn't have that much fun with it. So I don't really know what to do. Um, Blue Reflection, Second Lights. I got this because at the time, this was like the biggest anime game that you could pick up. I have not actually played Blue Reflection. I'm uh, sorry, Blue Reflection. I sounded uh, a little bit stereotypically racist -y Asian there. Um, I have not actually played Blue Reflection, and of course I'm not going to touch this game until I play the other game. When I saw the first Blue Reflection, I thought it looked kind of uh, boring. Um, it didn't look really that special to me. 
And then when I, this came out, I actually thought this looked amazing. So, of course, you know, I sort of fought with myself. Do I just want to play this game and ignore the first game? Or do I want to wait till I play the first game? And right now, I've got so much going on that I've decided to just wait and try to pick up the first game first. If this game looks great and uh, I wasn't really digging the first game, then maybe I was just wrong about the first game. You know, maybe uh, the first game actually is amazing and I would be into it and I just judged a book by its cover. Collection of Mana, I'm going to say the same thing that I said in my uh, PS4 and PS5 collection video. I don't really like the Mana games that much. Um, but, you know, you have to show respect to the classics. It's a Square Onyx game. I'm a huge Square Onyx fanboy. So I have uh, all of the Mana games I can get my hands on. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Hyrule Warriors is my favorite Mushu game of all time. I love Hyrule Warriors more than Dynasty Warriors, more than Samurai Warriors, more than any of them. I don't like this game nearly as much. This game takes itself a little bit too seriously for my taste. Um, one of the things that makes uh, the first Hyrule Warriors so great is just how wacky and weird it is. You got things like the uh, Great Fairy Link where like, Link himself is like in a bottle and then you're playing as the Great Fairy. I thought that was really funny. Um, you've got characters from uh, all of the different Zelda games. You can play as Wind Waker characters. You can play as... Uh, Majora's Mask characters, which is obviously uh, one of my favorite games of all time, so I love that. But this game here, it's got a little bit of that. Like, I do dig some of the stuff for this game, but most of the really, really cool stuff is in the DLC, and I haven't bought the DLC yet. And the story mode, again, it just takes itself a little bit too seriously. It's still really good, don't get me wrong. I still like it. It's still fun. Um, I just don't like it anywhere near as much as I like the first Hyrule Warriors. Maybe when a definitive edition of that game comes out um, that has all the DLC included, I'll change my mind on it. I'm ready to change my mind and love that game as much as I love the first one. Just hasn't happened yet. Zelda Link's Awakening. Um, so <laughs> this is actually an interesting one for me. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys something fairly lame about myself, okay? Um... Back when I had the original Game Boy, my mom's picked up the original Link's Awakening, and that was the first game that I got really invested in, but I could not figure out how to get to the first dungeon. <laughs> so uh, if you don't know, I'm going to go ahead and spoil uh, the very first real puzzle in this game here. Um, there's basically this part where you have to take some magic powder and sprinkle it on a raccoon to make the raccoon sneeze. Um, because you go into the Lost Woods, and it turns out that there's a raccoon that's actually controlling the Lost Woods, and they're the reason that you can't get out. But honestly, I could not figure that out when I was a kid. I thought the raccoon was just, like, a regular character. And, uh, I, you know, I read his text. He was like, my nose is sensitive around powdery stuff, and it just, for some reason, I just could not put two and two together and figure that out when I was a kid. So what I would do is I would just run around and uh, collect rupees. And then when I got 90, 999 rupees, that was like beating the game for me. And then I would start over and try it again. <laughs> and then I never figured out how to get to the first dungeon. And then about, uh, I'd say like seven or eight years later, I did finally figure it out. And I did finally go through the game and enjoy it. I've beaten the original game like 20 times. It was a really, really formative game in my childhood. Probably the Zelda game that I've played the most in my entire life. This remake here is completely fine. It did not blow me away. It was very nostalgic to go back and experience this game again. But I'll be completely honest. Um, I just wasn't that impressed with it. Uh, I, I am one of the people who don't really like this art style that they went with here. I understand it. Like, I totally get it. I know what they were trying to do. It's the same thing they did with um, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I'm not a fan. Not a fan of that art style, but I do think the game controls very smooth, and it was nice to experience it again. Oh. Alright, so we got one of the ugly cases here. This is the Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. I like the Mystery Dungeon games just fine. I think the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games are a little bit weak. Um... 
Etchery and Mystery Dungeons, really fun. And then you've got games like Izuna, which are really fun. And, of course, uh, Omega Labyrinth, which is my favorite for obvious reasons. But the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is okay, too. It's not that terrible. I just think that the whole, like, collecting Pokemon aspect doesn't work well for Mystery Dungeon. Because you can't use more than, like, two Pokemon at a time. So it feels completely useless to go through and actually collect dozens of Pokemon, because you're never going to go beyond using, like, two of them. Um, Bakugan, I picked this up because... Alright, listen to me, okay? I know you're going to think I'm crazy. There is a Bakugan game on the PS3 that is one of the most fun multiplayer experiences that I have ever had in my entire life. Um, I, I Listen to me. I know you don't believe me right now. I know you think I'm either lying or being facetious or something. But I am not. I promise you, PS3 Bakugan with your friends is so much fun. So every time I see a Bakugan game like this, I always think about picking it up. And I picked this up. It's nowhere near as good. Um, don't play this game. It'll make me look like a liar. But I'm telling you, if you ever get a chance to play PS3 Bakugan, or I think they also um, released it on the Wii, it's good. It's so good. It's some of the most fun that you can have with your friends, I promise you. Another copy of Star Allies here. Tokyo Mirage Sessions. This was a Persona game. Um, I, it's really sad that this is actually part of the Shin Megami Tensei series because it is very, very close to being just a Persona game. Um, and I love it, actually. If I were to put this among the Persona games, I would actually rank it as one of my favorites. Um, I think, let's see, it would be 5, 3, 4, and then this game, and then 2, and then 1. Um, this is such an underrated classic. If you haven't played it and you're into Persona-style games, you absolutely owe it to yourself to play this. Um, the only thing that hurt this game when it came out is the fact that it was a Wii U exclusive, and now that it's not a Wii U exclusive, there's no excuse. If you don't know anything about this game, let me explain that really quick. It's a Shin Megami Tensei game, or more accurately, again, a Persona game, um, where you play as some teenagers in modern-day uh, Japan, and there's uh, basically another world, just like in Persona, and they're sending over monsters to steal, like, musical talents from people because they can use musical talent to power up demons. And uh, you end up teaming up with reincarnations of Fire Emblem protagonists uh, in order to fight against the evil. So it's basically like you have the characters from past Fire Emblem games in a Persona-style game, and um, the entire game is based around music and stuff. One of the best battle systems of any and I mean any JRPG that I've played in my entire life. It's really good. The only thing I have uh, really bad to say about it is they censored a lot of stuff from the Japanese version. Understandably so, there are some things, like the characters, of course, are underage, just like in pretty much every Japanese JRPG. And there was some stuff around, like, um, underage modeling and stuff that happened in the original. And look, I, I get it. I understand why that stuff has to be cut. Um, but I still disagree with it, and I'll tell you why. It's not because I want to see, uh, things revolving around high schoolers modeling, okay? I totally understand why this stuff has to be cut. It's not necessarily something that I want in games, but at the same time, I also don't want, um, I don't want game companies deciding what is and isn't acceptable for me, okay? I want to be able to make those decisions for myself. Um, it is not going to... It's not going to hurt anybody. It's not going to turn anybody uh, into a massive pedophile knowing that female modeling exists in Japan or, of, I'm sorry, underage models exist in Japan, okay? 16, 17-year-olds do do um, slightly uh, provocative modeling. It is a thing that exists. It's a very unfortunate thing. Um, I, too, disagree with the methodology, but um, I, think, I, I think it's very... Uh, I think it's a very slippery slope when you start letting game companies tell you what is or isn't acceptable for you personally. Basically, I just want to play the exact same copy of this game that the Japanese public got to play. 
you know, I, I paid the same amount of money for this game that somebody in Japan would pay for their copy of the game, and I just want to get the exact same experience they do. Um, so, yeah, obviously, you could we could argue back and forth there. I'm not going to argue and tell you that there should be uh, things related to um, underage high school girls modeling in their games, but I'm also going to say that uh, censorship is bad, and I disagree with pretty much all forms of it. Um, if you're really that opposed to it, then just don't buy a copy of the game. That's my that's my philosophy, but we're going to go ahead and stop talking about that now. So, Paper Mario, Origami King, people will argue that this is uh, Mario's... Sorry, Paper Mario's Return to Form. If you don't know, the original Paper Mario is my favorite game of all time. It's a game that I can still, to this day, just pop in and play for hours and hours uh, and just beat it over and over and over again. Um, Thousand Year Door, I recognize that it's really good. It's probably technically better than the first one, but uh, the first game is just a lot more comfy, in my personal opinion. Um, this game does not impress me. Um, it's still missing pretty much everything that I loved about the original Paper Mario games. Is it better than what we've been getting recently with, like, Color Splash and uh, Sticker Star, yeah, obviously, you have to actively try to make a game worse than some of the Paper Mario games beginning recently. But um, I'm not ready to accept this as the new standard for Paper Mario games. I still don't think Paper Mario has gotten back there yet. Crystal Crisis. Uh, this is basically just a tetris -y puzzle game. Um, it's actually a remake of an old game called Puzzle Fighters, if you remember that. Um, it's got some really interesting characters in it. It's got the characters from, like, Cave Story. It's got the characters from that uh, fishing game I cannot remember the name of. Um, and it's even got a character from... I don't know if she's here on the front cover or not. Let me see. Look. Oh, yeah, right. Here. It's also got Solange from um, Code of Princess. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a really charming little puzzle game. Like, when I'm in the mood to play something Tetris-y, uh, this is normally the game that I pop in. I'm not going to say it's like a masterpiece or anything, but it's pretty good. And I think that's all of the regular case games I have. Let's go over some of the metal case games here. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Um, I don't actually like that game, but... Um, I mean, the characters are cute. <laughs> That's fine, I guess. Um, Shining Resonance. I have the weirdest history with this game. Um, basically, if you don't know, uh, there was a Weiss Swart set released for Shining Resonance, and I did a review of that set. And then when they announced that this game is coming out on the Switch, and it was getting this really sick uh, tin to go along with it, I had to have it, so I ended up getting it. And I was so excited for it, and then I ended up just not playing it. Um, obviously, this is another game that I got fairly early on, so this is another game that got stolen, so I don't have uh, the actual game in here anymore. Um, I basically just keep it around because I really like this metal artwork. But I did end up buying it for the PC, and I still haven't touched it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I... I really went, was excited for this game, and I still am. Like, when I think about playing it, I think, man, you know what? I gotta get that in. I gotta play it. That looks really good. And I still haven't. X wrong with me. Um, This is the metal case for uh, Mario Kart. I'm gonna level with you guys. I am not a Mario Kart fan. I basically only play it socially. It sounds like I'm talking about smoking or something. I'm a social... A Mario Kart uh, player, but I really, like, don't play it in my free time. Um, it's, yeah, if I'm not with at least one other person, I'm not putting a Mario Kart game anywhere near one of my systems. It's just, it's not fun unless I'm playing it multiplayer. All right, so let's go over uh, some of my sort of special stuff here. Excited to show you guys some of this stuff. So there's the uh, Shantae Half Genie Hero. Collector's Edition, it's really banged up. Um, I've been through quite a lot of moves over these past six or seven years, and some of my stuff just has not survived uh, the moves that well. This is one of them. It's gotten really messed up, but what can you do? Still really like it. Um, running, out. running out of places to put this stuff. There's another metal case. I don't know how that got over there, but 
Here it is now. Shin Megami Tensei 5. Oh, obviously, I got this on release date. Alright. Get ready. Get ready to completely turn on me. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna lay it out and say it like it is. I'm not that impressed with this game. It's good. I recognize all of its good uh, points. But Shin Megami Tensei 4, in my personal opinion, is the peak of the series. This game just does not impress me nearly as much as 4 in Apocalypse did. Um, again, it's good. It's really, really, really good. Um, and I don't want to take anything away from it. It's, uh, it's just a really high-quality game. I just can't get into it as much as I did for and for Apocalypse. Again, I haven't beaten this game yet, so maybe my opinion will change. I am actively looking forward to beating it. I'm going to keep playing it until I do. But right now, man, I just I find it a little bit boring compared to four and four Apocalypse. Uh, here's just the box for my 3DS. I do have the Pikachu 3DS. Um, Pikachu is one of my favorite Pokemon. I know it's a very cliche thing to say, but. He is. I, I'm not going to lie to myself and say that I don't absolutely love Pikachu just because it's a very common opinion. Um, I'm not some hipster. Other people are also allowed to like Pikachu, and uh, I completely agree with them because Pikachu's adorable. This is one of my all-time favorite collector's editions for any game ever. It's the Undertale Collector's Edition. Um, I know that people are probably really tired of hearing this by now, but Undertale is one of my favorite games of all time. 10 out of 10 game, and it's really hard to explain to people why it's a 10 out of 10 without ruining parts of the game, so I won't go much further than that. But look at this collector's edition, man. This locket inside also plays a song from the game. It's a musical locket. It's really, really, really cool. And I'm kind of terrified to really open it up and uh, mess around with the stuff inside. But just know, like, look it up online what comes in this box. It's one of the coolest collector's editions ever made for one of the best games ever made. Sonic Mania. Um, I'm one of the few people that I know that actually really likes 3D Sonic games. So, you know, I'm not going to go on a whole tirade about how, like, this was Sonic's return to form and it was amazing to see another 2D Sonic game. I love this game to death, especially with some of the DLC characters. Like, uh, Ray the Squirrel is, like, my new favorite 2D Sonic character. I'm sorry, Tails. I still I still love you, Tails. Okay, I still love you, but Ray the Squirrel is too much fun to play as. Um, I love this game. I think it's really good. Um, and I mean, there's really not much more I can say about it than that. But keep in mind, this is also coming from somebody who actually loves 3D Sonic games um, a little bit more than I like 2D Sonic games. So my opinion might be completely invalid there. Um, here's the box for the Oculus Strip. Um, this is the uh, 10th Anniversary Edition. Um, again, I, I don't like this game anywhere near as much as I used to. I don't know why I don't know why my opinions changed, but I just don't like it that much anymore. Here's the special box for Silver Case 2425. Um, again, I haven't played this game yet. It looks really, really cool. I didn't really show this off before, but um, also my camera sucks, so you can't really see it that well anyway. Might be better if you guys just go and look at this on your own free time, but it is a really cool looking game, and I am looking forward to it at some point. There's a box for Sonic Colors. Uh, this absolutely hideous Sonic keychain that comes with it. I don't know who in their right mind thought that this would be a cute thing to include. I'm sure somebody out there really likes it, but that person definitely isn't me. Nor do I think I would get along very well with that person. Um, here's the collector's box for the Soul Nomad and Phantom Brave thing here. Um, I am excited for more of these uh, Nice collections to come out. This is Volume 1, and I will for sure be pre-ordering uh, Volumes 2 and 3 when they come out. Um, Octopath Traveler. Alright, guys. Listen to me for a second. I don't know how to tell you this. This game is terrible. It is one of the worst JRPGs that I've played in my entire life, and that is not an exaggeration. I'm not saying this for clout. I'm not saying this to be uh, a contrarian and go against everybody. This is 
by far one of the worst experiences I've ever had with a JRPG. But that being said, this might be my favorite um, <laughs> collector's edition in my entire collection. So here's the actual box. It's shaped like a book. And when you open her up, there's another book inside that's actually like a diorama. So when you open up each of these pages, you get, like, I don't know how well you can see it here on camera, but you actually get, like, a pop-up of each of the characters' um, stories. So here's the best character in the game, the thief. And then, of course, you know, you go through here, and um, you've got the hunter, I believe it is. You go through here. Um, this is the alchemist, I want to say. Yeah. Go through here. You've got Primrose the Dancer, um, my second favorite character. Um, you've got the Warriors here. You've got the, I think this is the Healer? No, it's the Merchant. I recognize her. Yeah, you've got the Merchant here. Um, you've got the Bookworm guy here. And then this last page is a little bit broken. I don't know how this happens but for some reason the last page really just doesn't uh bend out the way it should but still really cool anyways yeah um so as far as collector's editions go this is one of the coolest things that i've ever seen and i know a lot of people love uh octopath traveler primarily for the um the art style and i'm not going to argue with you if you just look at the game it's gorgeous it is one of the best looking games on the Switch, and I will definitely stand up and shout that to the heavens with you. But when it comes to gameplay, uh, that's not it, Chief. It's got this nice little cloth map here. And yeah, overall, I think aesthetically, this is uh, one of the coolest things that the Switch has. I wish all collector's editions were as cool as this one. I just also wish that the game itself had been... Uh, <laughs> refined and made into a good game before it was released lots and lots and lots of wasted potential that's all i'm gonna say about that there if you like it i'm not trying to tell you you're wrong or anything you are more than welcome to like whatever it is your little heart desires but in my personal opinion as somebody who has pretty much dedicated his life to just playing jrpgs all the time um i do not agree with you i think the game is one of the worst jrpgs that i have played ever and that is not hyperbole go ahead and get this back here while you guys rage and leave your your dislikes and let me know in the comments how wrong i am it's completely fine uh i like to stir up a little bit of uh anger in my circles every now and then it, it keeps things lively makes things kind of fun if you want to go on and argue with me that uh, octopath traveler is a good game then i'm more than ready to hear you guys say it so here's the uh, Fire Emblem Warriors um, Collector's Edition. Um, I really like the Collector's Edition stuff that this comes with, like the cards and stuff. I think that's really, really cool. And the poster is really nice too. Um, but I kind of just keep it in its box. Again, the box is a little bit janky and messed up because, of course, it is. Um, again, I've been through a lot of moves. I've pulled stuff in and out of storage a ton of times. I've dragged stuff around uh, the state with me. And some of my stuff just hasn't survived that well because of it, but... What can you do? Here's Let's Go Pikachu. Of course, I chose Pikachu. I like Pikachu way better than I like Eevee. Um, this is the one that came with the Pokeball Plus. Um, I actually did a review of this on my channel as well, but to summarize it, um, I actually really enjoyed this game. It was probably the easiest Pokemon game that's ever been released, ever. But um, I actually thought that the catching mechanic in this game was really good until... Legends Arceus came out, obviously. Legends Arceus has the best catching in the entire series. Let's not kid ourselves here. But at the time, that was the best catching mechanics that we had in a Pokemon game. Oh, Persona Q2. They, I also have a review of this on my channel. <laughs> this is just a giant advertisement for other videos. Um, I really like this collector's edition. Um, again, I just absolutely love the plush that this came with. It's super cute. I'm a huge sucker for plushes. Like, plushies are, like, the coolest thing to collect, in my opinion. So, um, I do, in fact, 
co- get games or get collector positions for games based on whether or not they have plushies. But I was going to get this anyway. The, you know, it's Persona Q. Um, this is, like, the best Etrian Odyssey series that exists. Uh, these are way better than the mainline Etrian Odyssey games. Stay mad, fans. Stay mad. Um, and, it, you know, it came with, actually, it, it came with, like, a bunch of collectibles that actually went together with the um, the other things in the series. But that's neither here nor there. It's a really cool collector's edition, and I really, really enjoyed the game. This. You may be wondering why I have this. I will never get rid of this. Um, some of you guys may not know about this, okay? But let me tell you, this game has a ton of history behind it. Um, I know a lot of people use Smash Brothers nowadays to hack their Wiis, but at the time, this game was like the primary way to hack your Wii. So I keep it around for that uh, sort of historic that history of like being the game that I use to hack the Wii, um, and you know it's just a momentous game to have, and I think it's a little bit more unique to have something like this than it is to have Smash Brothers because you know everybody has Smash Brothers, and you know nowadays everybody uses Smash Brothers to hack their Wii, but if you were there, then you know you know how much uh, <laughs> how much fun it was to. Pop this in and then get to your homebrew menu. This right here might be a little bit hard to tell, but this is the collector's box for a game called Chris Tales. Chris Tales is one of the most underrated games that came out last year. It has the coolest mechanic that I've seen in like any JRPG in a long time. The battle system is very reminiscent of old games like uh, Paper Mario and Legend of Dragoon, where you actually have it's turn-based, but you can actually actively do things to deal more damage. So, a lot of you guys have never heard this game, heard of this game before, or you've heard of it and you don't know much about it. Let me explain it real quick. Your main character is basically trapped between the past, the present, and the future. So, all three of these time frames are shown on your screen at the same time. In the middle, you have the present, and then there's like a sort of cut here like a triangle and on one side you can see the past and on the other side you can see the future so when you walk over characters for example um like let's say you walk past like an adult male um when you see him in the past part of the screen he'll be a child and when you see him in the uh, future part of the screen he'll either be an old man or sometimes he won't be there at all to imply that he's passed away um, one of the coolest things I've seen in any game, and if you've ever seen things related to this game, like any merchandise or anything, you'll know this is one of the most gorgeous art styles in any game that's ever been released. Um, every time they release some kind of new uh, merchandise for this game, I am floored by how gorgeous the game looks. Um, some of the best merchandise for any game out there. I am beyond happy with the fact that I was able to get my hands on this collector's edition. It had a ton of great uh, artwork and it had a ton of great um, collectibles inside that really emphasized just how beautiful the game was. That being said, um, I haven't actually beaten it yet. <laughs> I know it's it's awful of me to sort of beg up this game as being like an amazing game and chastise you for not having played it yet um, when I myself haven't even beaten it yet. Um, I've got a little bit of a rough history with this. You see, there's there are parts in the game where if you are asked to make a decision, you can end up making like wrong decisions that cut off huge chunks of the game. So I've decided that if I pick it up and play it again, I'm going to play it with a guide. And I know that's sacrilege. I know people are going to get on my case for that. You know, it's beating a game with a guide isn't really beating it and all that. But... Um, it's really upsetting to me that you can make decisions in this game or like uh, go past certain event triggers and stuff in this game that will render parts of the game just like unseeable. Like I said before, when I go through a game, I want to be able to experience the game 100% to its fullest on the first playthrough. That's just the way I prefer it. Um, I don't really be have time in my life to be playing uh, games multiple times unless they're very specific games. So, yeah, 
When I go through this game again, I'll probably do it with a walkthrough so that I can make sure that I don't actually miss anything this time. But I just haven't had time for it yet. At some point, I will go back and play this game, though. I love it too much to not touch it. All right. Just got a few more things over here. <laughs> I've got the heaviest ones. All right. So again, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I hate this game. I actually think it's a really, really poorly designed video game, um, especially as far as JRPGs go. I don't hate it, hate it as much as other people do. Um, obviously, the sexualized characters don't bother me in the slightest. Um, and, you know, you've got people like Dunkey who, when they talk about the game, they focus really hard on the sexualized elements. I think that's a giant trap. I, I think it's, um, I, I think it's a really poor decision as a game critic to focus so heavily on like just one aspect of the game and i think it's uh i don't know I, I think it's a little bit too common to write a game completely off because of skimpy outfits or because a character is uh slightly sexualized i understand that that can turn some people off but believe me this game doesn't need it um there are so many awful game design decisions when it comes to this game that uh, you don't need to harp on about how sexy the characters are. There are tons of other things that you could be criticizing this game for, but no. Everybody gets on Pyrrha and Mithra's case because they've got giant titties and they completely ignore all of the other glaring flaws. It's a really, really cool collector's edition, and I like the original Xenoblade Chronicles as well as Xenoblade Chronicles uh, X. So I am happy that I have this because, you know, it's just... You know, and another thing that I have as part of the collection, but um, the game itself isn't that great. And I'm really hoping that we get Xenoblade Chronicles X because um, that game actually deserves to be on the Switch and get another chance at life. Bravely Seconds. Ah, I love this game and I love this collector's edition. It is so good. It is one of the most beautiful collector's edition boxes that I have. Um, cast for this game was nearly perfect. Of course, I still miss Ring a Bell to this day, but uh, I love everything else about it. It's got a really, really beautiful art book. In fact, here, let me see if I can open this bad boy up. The box itself is kind of falling apart, so I don't want to be too rough with it, but let's see if we can get in here and check out some of the stuff. Ooh, yeah, boy. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. It's so good. Um, it looks great. It's got like, it's really like nice sort of leathery feeling cover. I love it. It's great. <laughs> There's not much else I can say about it other than that. Um, I've already kind of given my piece about Bravely Default when I looked at Bravely Default 2 earlier. Um, 2 is the weakest in the series for me. The first one is the strongest in the series for me. And then uh, Bravely Default, or sorry, Bravely Seconds sits somewhere in the middle for me where I really... Uh, enjoyed it. Not as much as the first one, but certainly way more than two. And then finally, we've got Love Plus. Um, now, this is going to be a fairly controversial thing, but uh, Love Plus was my first dating sim game, and I actually really, really enjoyed it. I actually got it on the 3DS because there were some interesting um, elements of the 3DS version that uh, were just really cool. So basically... The 3DS had voice recognition, so if you spoke Japanese, you could actually speak Japanese to the character that you decided to date, and um, she would actually have these mini conversations with you. Um, there's the case right there, one of the coolest looking cases on the 3DS. Um, another cool thing was it had augmented reality, so if you wanted to set up your 3DS, you could actually like go on these mini dates with your character, like it would look like the character was like in your room with you, and then of course with the voice recognition, you could talk to her. Um, I know all of this sounds like the most forever alone thing you've ever heard of, um, but uh, I, I really enjoyed this game. Heavy here. I've got one more little Nintendo thing here. Um, I actually ended up picking up the uh, Zelda Game & Watch thing here, and it's actually what I use as my desk clock. Yes, it is currently about 6 o'clock in the morning right now, um, but I've been having a lot of fun doing these videos here, so I haven't actually gone to bed yet. I've been recording for the past 
four hours or so. So, yeah, I mean, that's essentially it. Um, I'm going to do one more of these videos. My voice is getting a little bit raspy, but I think I can power through and get the Xbox one done tonight as well. So I think that's what I'm going to do. If you uh, Actually, I was going to say if you enjoyed the video, please uh, leave me a like, but that is sort of my old habits. I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I, I really, I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those things where I, I know asking for people to subscribe and asking people to leave a like works, but I'm trying to get out of the habit of asking for that kind of stuff because I think now that I'm a little bit further into my YouTube-ness, um, I'm starting to cringe a little bit harder at uh, saying things like, only 50% uh, of you are subscribed, so make sure you subscribe and sort of ding that bell icon to... I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm trying to get out of the habit of doing it. I know that it works, but, you know, I'm not... I don't think I'm willing to... I don't think I'm willing to say that kind of stuff anymore. But anyways, we've been sitting here talking for too long. Rambling is one of the problems that I have and I'm trying to get over, so we're going to go ahead and cut it off here. Um, if you want to prove you made it to the end of the video, um, I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the last one. If I came across a game that you've played before, then why don't you go ahead and tell me what your thoughts on the game are in the comment section below. Especially if it's one of the games that I said were terrible. Again, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. If you like a game that I criticize, I completely respect your opinion, and I completely respect your, uh, your will to enjoy a game that I didn't enjoy. Um, our differences are what make us so interesting. So let me know if there was a game that I said was awful that you actually liked, or if there was a game that I showed off here that you have fond memories with. Let me know what those are. And um, if you're going to join me for the last one here where we look at the Xbox games, I'll ex be excited to see you there. If not, then catch you later. Hopefully you're looking forward to the next Metamorphosis, and I will see you next time.